This is a totally different podcast episode than I usually do because here I'm showcasing the amazing people who will be at a Freelance Unlocked conference, the first conference for freelancers that made with love in order to take place in Berlin on May 15, 16, 2024. If you are a freelancer in Europe, it's an event made for you to learn, exchange experiences, and build your network of great freelancers and experts who move the freelance economy forward. So go to freelanceunlocked.com and grab your ticket right away. My name is Yuri, I'm a community builder at Code Control and 9 am works and my guest is John Younger, an HR tech thought leader, author, advisor, Forbes contributor, founding partner of the Agile Talent Collaborative, and one of the key figures in the freelance revolution whose expertise shapes global business strategies. So, hello, John. Hello, Yuri. I don't recognize myself, but I'm sure my mother would have been very glad to hear this introduction. That's how I see you, you know, and I, I, I don't know even how to ask, but how did you start your journey in the freelance world? You know, I, I was a consultant first and foremost, I, and, a, and, a, and a graduate student and an instructor at the University of Toronto before that. And it became clear that I was very interested in building my own business and, and making my own path. Uh, freelancing made all the sense in the world for that. There were times when I was part of a larger organization, but uh, over the last, I don't know, seven or eight years, uh, I, I have been a part-time partner in a number of companies, but also a freelancer in some others. So it's a, a portfolio that, uh, that I've developed over time. I'm very excited about it. And I get to work with great people like, like you, uh, like Mark Clemens, uh, like uh, the, the more, like Mark Manuel Mora, like Thomas uh, Moss. I mean, just to, and and of course Matt Matola. So it's a real pleasure to work with all kinds of wonderful, interesting, successful people, and what a great opportunity to learn as well as do. You are one of the person who are moving the freelance economy forward, definitely, totally. And you definitely have this understanding on where we are moving. So what is your take on the freelance economy and how it will develop in the near future? You know, I, 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 I believe that over time, freelancing will overwhelm traditional staffing. I believe that's true. I believe it's true because it makes sense financially. It makes sense in terms of access to, to skills. It makes sense because people don't necessarily want to live where they work. It makes sense because things are changing so quickly that no organization has the wealth to, to, to bring all of the resources inside that it needs. And in fact, more and more organizations are saying we don't need a lot of resources inside as long as we have access to expertise outside. Smart organizations are learning that. And uh, it's, it's extraordinary to see companies that are generating uh, uh, revenue in excess of 100 million euros uh, with a team of 10 or a team of 15. The combination of, uh, of the internet, the, the internet, uh, the AI, and choices around work are, are really changing things in a very fundamental way, and we expect it to continue into the future. And from the employment perspective, so uh, it's not that easy to be a freelancer. So you have to be everything and you have to wear so many hats. And sometimes it's so much easier to be just this usual employer and uh, just to do what they told you to do and then just have fun, oh, kind of have fun. But do you think that people who are currently working in this uh, normal employment thing have to take a closer look on freelancing and have to learn some skills? Yes. There are three things, it turns out, that are, 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 are leading people to hesitate becoming freelancers, although interested in it. The, the first is they're worried about the volatility in their income. You know, one of the problems, Yuri, for you, me, and others is that we may be doing very well one month and then not so well the next. The, the second is it, it's hard to give up the benefits of uh, of being an employee you get vacation you get sick pay uh, you, you get time off i mean you get all kinds of benefits and you don't get that as a as a, a solopreneur and, and the and the third is that people are lonely sometimes in this world now here's the thing yuri we can fix all three of those the the platforms as they grow and become more significant are able to provide income smoothing that help people with the volatility they're able to provide benefits 
as the business uh, and the platform grows. Some of those benefits may be paid by freelancers, but at least, for example, in areas like mortgage and, and, and debt and insurance, uh, the freelance platforms can be very helpful where traditional banks may not be. So the, the last is loneliness. And of course, the, the challenge with loneliness is you got to get out there. You got to network. You got to participate. If you are lonely as a freelancer, you're the only one who can fix it. It is not a function of the platform. It's not a function of the craft. It's not a function of the, 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 the way in which we do our, our professionalism. Uh, it's just that I haven't gotten out there and built my little community. And and the best communities in the world, TopTal and, and Andela and you know Juno and many others and Code Control, certainly, you know, they still depend on people being activists. You got to make your own pizza in this in this world, both professionally, but also as a as also as a freelancer. You know, it's so funny. It's something that I'm kind of fighting with freelancers in our community. I'm like telling them, that, hey, you have to build your network, but not the, at the moment when you need in need of projects, but like when you are in projects, you have to still continue and building your network. Like it's exactly. it's something that you are doing daily. Like not not okay, not hourly, but at least daily. You you're yeah. constantly investing in it. And it's so much better. You don't have to be this lonely wolf as sometimes people talk about freelancers. There are so many people around that they share their thoughts, they share their experience, they share share their challenges. Just go out there, like be open. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So give me a sneak peek into what you'll be talking about on the Freelance Unlocked stage. Oh, I'm so pleased that you're asking. And and <laughs> let me let me describe it as a cat, let me describe it as a title. It, it's a freelancer first workshop. Let me explain what that means. I, I, I believe deeply, I've written about this, I've talked about this, I believe that it's true that the success of the freelance economy depends on a better experience for individual freelancers that individual freelancers' success, satisfaction, and prosperity is the rising tide that lifts all of our boats. Platforms understood that early, early in the, 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 uh, the, the era of freelancing. And we saw wonderful stuff happening in a wide variety of, of freelance platforms. Uh, but over time, what we've seen is, is that Freelance platforms have moved more in the direction of being a service to clients than being a service to freelancers. I want to re-establish that balance. Clearly, the role of, of, of the freelance platform for clients is to make available talents that they could not find otherwise and could not access otherwise. But, but very importantly, the question is, how are platforms helping their individual freelancers and freelancer teams to be more successful. And that's the focus of the, the, the workshop. Over the hour and a half, we're gonna talk about three requirements. First, how do we help clients be better clients? <laughs> Second, how do we help freelancers to be better freelancers and better business owners? And third, how do we deliver a better platform experience? That's my goal in the Freelancer First workshop We've been running groups for the last two years of uh, running groups of CEOs for the last couple of years. And we're really excited about some of the things that they're coming up with. I want to share those to participants in, in this workshop and I want to get their ideas about how we can deliver value in our platforms that are both financially achievable because we know that they're not they don't have endless money. But how do we how can we practically help clients? To be better clients, which in turn helps freelancers to be better freelancers, which in turn leads to delivering a better experience on the platform. And if we can work on those and come up with some specifics, I've got a big pen and a big megaphone, and I want to tell that story around the world. So I am very excited about meeting with my German colleagues and my colleagues who may not be German, but live in Germany or joining this conference. It is such an important opportunity to talk about how we create that rising tide that helps all of us. You know, it's interesting. I'm talking to so many freelancers and nobody ever told me that they get most of their projects from platforms. 
So they were like, I get my projects from networks. I get my projects from colleagues. I get my projects from uh, people I worked previously or from some recruiters reaching out to me. And I'm always like, we're always having this conversation within the team. Like, how can we switch from making freelancers compete for projects or making companies compete for freelancers? And it's not that easy, to be honest. No, it's not that easy. It's yeah. not that easy at all. And And you're absolutely right. If you if you take let me give you some variation in data. So if you go to some place like Upwork or or Fiverr, less than five percent of their freelancers get any work at all. If you were to go to some of the well, uh, Code Control is an example where where you are. It's normally ten to twenty percent. It's in that in that range. If you if you go to a, a platform like TopTal, they may bring it a little higher to thirty or forty percent. But there are some very specific things that you can do to help your freelancers to generate more work and create a more cooperative environment. One simple one is giving them feedback on what good pricing looks like. Yeah. Another one is making sure that they are fit for technical work. I think here about technical people, but you could also think about marketing services and consultants. Are they up to date? One of the things that freelance platforms can do is help our freelancers stay up to date, not only technically their craft, but also behaviorally. You know, people people win jobs based on their technical skills and lose jobs, whether it's freelancing or full-time, based on their behavior. Yeah. Let's, let's help people to keep their jobs longer and to find more opportunity by providing that education. And I'll give you an example, Yuri, that I, I think is really interesting. We looked at the data from our global survey and what we found was that there were kind of four stages for early freelancers. If you think about the first five to 10 years of a freelancer, first year, you may remember, was probably awful. You know, you didn't know how to do it. You didn't know how to make money. You didn't know how to, how to work effectively with clients as a solopreneur. I mean, all of those things. And yeah. so what we see is that people in the first year of freelancing have a, are really excited, really enthusiastic, and they lose a lot of that over the course of that first year. And they're asking themselves, is this right for me? That's a big decision. And many people say it's not right for me. I mean, what, what we've seen in the recent Malt research is that about 30% are open to the possibility of full-time work. So what's the next thing? Which is I've got to make a decision whether I'm going to commit to this line of work for some time. And then my enthusiasm comes back. I figure out how to do it and I'm doing well. And then around five years, I go, but wait a second. Is this really what I want to do for a career? How am I doing, Yuri? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. again, the question is, how am I doing? Do I want to keep going? What do I see as the issues? Are, am, I, am I capable of building the career that I want as a solopreneur? Again, people make a de decision. And then they seem to get excited again for those that stay and then many leave. When we think about those people, the people in the first five years of freelancing, we can help them a lot. And, and right now, the problem is we sort of see everybody as an experienced freelancer from an educational perspective, rather than understanding that there are some newbies here that need some additional help. Why aren't we connecting them with mentors? Why aren't we finding coaching? Why aren't we providing education? These are not expensive things to do. So you, know, you can see that I'm an advocate of yeah, free yeah, yeah, first. Yeah. I believe deeply, deeply that the, the success and prosperity of freelancers is the rising tide that will that will create freelancing as a dominant, dominant profession, professional path. It's not a profession. My profession is psychologist, lawyer, doctor, you know, whatever it is. But my path, I believe, will see not only more than 50% doing side gigs right now, which is true, we're going to see more and more people make the leap to full time. But in order to do that, we have to have a system of supports that enables them. And that's why we've got to work on those three things, helping freelancers be better, helping clients be better, and helping to deliver a better experience on the platform. You know, it's interesting. We have like uh, two types of freelancers uh, at Code Controls that are mostly senior experts. And at 9 a.m. platform, there are every freelancer. And uh, I was like, how can how can we help them? They know everything. And then like 
no way you know there are so many people who it's first of all it's impossible to know everything you know you are learning during your whole life and it's like i don't know who knows everything maybe only god but once again you never know and uh it's 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 very crucial thing that you are talking about that there are still people who are still even no matter how experienced they are maybe they hate invoicing and they still don't know how to do it the best way Maybe they hate talking to people and they're still receiving projects from referrals, but the moment there are, there are no referrals, like they don't know what to do and they still have to find it out. And um, there are so many things to learn. And I'm curious, what is one thing that every freelancer must do right away to get projects via freelancing platforms? Uh, they need to clearly define their expertise and clearly articulate the kinds of freelance roles for which they are most suited and most interested. You know, you've got to decide in life whether whether you're a buyer or a seller. It's a very important distinction. If you're if you're a seller, you're looking for somebody to buy. But if you're a buyer, you're you're looking for something that you really do believe in. I believe that it's helpful for people who are solopreneurs, even if it's difficult because they, they don't have all the work that they'd like to or they're young or whatever. I think you gotta be a buyer in life. I think you've gotta establish not only your credentials, but also your requirements. And, and the more you are able to do that, the more you can see the gap between where you are now and where you need to be for those requirements to be meaningful. Close that damn gap and you'll do great. <laughs> so John, you're definitely going to Freelance Unlocked, but what would you say to your friend if they asked you whether they should go to the Freelance Unlocked conference? I think it's the place to be on the 15th and 16th of May in Berlin. I think it's the place to be for freelancers because you're going to meet an awful lot of people that you don't know that you should know. And as well as that, you're going to learn some things that you didn't know that you needed to learn. And finally, you become part of an effort to start to influence government policy, which is not always advantageous to freelancers. But we haven't organized as a freelance community. And, and this is one of the steps toward organizing as a freelance community to demand reasonable conditions to apply their craft. You know, the challenge is that governments need money and it's a lot easier to, to borrow, to, to, to get money when you withhold salary for tax purposes. This has not happened forever. It only started in the United States after the, the World War II. Um, and, and the consequence of it, you know, is we, we need to understand, we need to do a, a better job, if I may say so. <laughs> And uh, and I think that um, the challenge is that governments can find other ways to make sure that their tax coffers are full without being disingenuous to freelancers and pushing uh, full time work roles because it's just easier to generate revenue for the government. That's not that's not good. And it's easier to control people. Hmm. Sure is. <laughs> it sure is. So and. Even before the conference, what is the best way to connect with you? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> send, me a, send me a note on LinkedIn. Always the best way. I'd love to hear from you. I'm always looking. You know, I, I write the stories of the freelance revolution because people ought to know those stories because at some point, you know, the history will want to know what happened during this year and nobody else was writing it. So I thought I might as well. I... I I think that that I'm always eager to hear about new companies that are doing interesting things and freelancers who are doing interesting things for their clients. So please, uh, John Younger, uh, J-O-N-Y-O-U-N-G-E-R uh, at, uh, at, at LinkedIn, please write to me and I'd like to meet you. Got it. John, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom even before the conference. And I can't wait to learn even more from you on Freelance Unlocked and hope to see you very soon in person. We will see you in person. Thank you, Yuri. <laughs> Looking for that coffee. <laughs> will do. 
And for those who listen to this episode, I hope you learn from John's experience and say thank you to him in person at the Freelance Unlocked conference on May 15th, 16th in Berlin. So go to freelanceunlocked.com, grab your ticket and meet you there.